Sup y'all, and welcome to the Food Network Part 2. In this video, we're going to continue looking into agriculture and industrialization by asking this essential question, when, where, and why did agriculture begin? Around 12,000 years ago, the first agricultural revolution began. No event was more important for modern human civilization. Now, agriculture is the deliberate tending of crops and livestock. As colder temperatures gripped the globe, the availability of food through hunting and gathering became ever more constrained. Out of necessity, the Neolithic era began around 12,000 years ago. Neo means new and lithic means stone, so the new stone age. Agriculture, and consequently human civilization, emerged primarily along river valleys. People would choose crops based on traits like taste or nutrition. So what was actually happening was that natural selection was being trumped by artificial or human selection. This is known as selective breeding, which we also refer to as plant or animal domestication. According to the renowned American geographer Carl Sauer, even before the Neolithic era started, plant domestication began with vegetative planting of root crops, such as beets, radishes, or parsnips as you see here. Parts of plants were placed in the ground to grow new plants. This is what's known as horticulture, the cultivation of flowers, fruits, vegetables, or ornamental plants. Sauer claimed that the invention of agriculture probably first occurred around the tropical seashores, where settled fishermen could produce enough surplus food so they could invest some of their time in experimenting and nurturing plants and animals. Now, the big jump forward occurred with the cultivation of seed crops, such as corn, barley, or wheat, as you see here. These crops are much more difficult to grow efficiently than root crops. The cultivation of seed plants beginning around 12,000 years ago was the true beginning of the first agricultural revolution. It took a great deal of trial and error in selecting the best seeds from existing crops, sowing the land properly, watering the plants, and harvesting the crops at just the right time. Hearths of seed agriculture occurred independently in regions like Mezo and South America. West Africa, as well as places like modern-day China and New Guinea. However, the most important location of early agriculture took place most likely first in Southwest Asia along the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, in what is called the Fertile Crescent. This location in modern-day Iraq had the best collection of plants and animals suitable for domestication. Examples of seed agriculture there include wheat, barley, and protein-rich lentils for food, as well as flax for making linen. It would benefit you to jot down a few of the other crop types listed at the different hearths. Not to memorize all of them, but to be aware of the origins of many of the foods we depend on today. It took generations to reach the level of sophistication necessary to grow, harvest, and domesticate these crops, such as the corn shown here. People also began to domesticate animals. This likely started hundreds of years after plant domestication had begun. Today, around 40 species have been domesticated. Now, many attributes are necessary for animal domestication. Some include a flexible diet, especially one in which animals eat foods that humans do not want, such as cattle grazing on grass. Also, a reasonably fast growth rate. The Egyptian painting there shows a donkey, uh, which can give birth to a foal around once a year. Another necessary trait is a pleasant disposition. So horses have proved to be very tameable over the years, whereas zebras, who are related to horses, have not. Also, temperament. So if you look at sheep, while very flighty, they show a flocking instinct when frightened, so they're very easy to control. And, of course, another one is a modifiable social hierarchy. So dogs, descended from wolves, are pack animals who are used to following an alpha or a leader, so it makes them very easy for humans to control them. Different societies advanced at varying speeds due to the constraints and advantages their spaces and places provided them. Space refers to the geometric surface or area on the Earth. Place, more specifically, is an area of bounded space, such as the Fertile Crescent. Because of its distinct plants and animals, it proved to be a place of unmatched advantage in the early Neolithic era. Due to the farming of plants and animals, the ecumene, or the proportion of Earth's surface occupied by permanent human settlement, expanded substantially. Now, most agriculturalists were subsistence farmers, meaning they produce food for themselves, their families, or their local communities and markets. So, to wrap things up, we'll look at two different types of extensive subsistence agriculture, in which relatively large areas are farmed, 
but with relatively low inputs of labor. And these lifestyles exist to this very day. Many subsistence farmers are sedentary, remaining in one location, while others have adapted a more mobile lifestyle. Such is the case with shifting cultivation, in which new farm fields are established after a few years in order to find more productive land. This activity is primarily located in tropical and subtropical areas, such as the rainforests. Usually, farmers move, or shift, to an area, cut down trees and vegetation, plow the open land, and then plant their crops on the new ground. When the land is depleted of nutrients, often after a few years, farmers start to cycle over again and shift to another area. A common type of shifting cultivation is slash and burn agriculture, also known as swidden or milpa. This style of farming is carried out by cutting down trees and then burning them in order for the ash to fertilize the soil. These societies have existed for millennia and still exist today. However, their numbers today are probably as many as a couple hundred thousand worldwide and shrinking. Shifting cultivation is just not productive enough to sustain large civilizations. With deforestation and modernization, fewer and fewer of these societies remain. Opposite the tropical rainforests are the arid and drier climates in and around the world's deserts. Here, another type of extensive subsistence agriculture emerged known as nomadic pastoralism, in which livestock are herded either seasonally or continuously in order to find fresh pastures for grazing. Typically, these nomads herd goats, sheep, or camels depending on their location. These nomads often move their herds to higher elevations in the summer and then to lower elevations in the winter to find the best pastures. They usually traded their animal products such as milk, skins, and meat for crops such as wheat or barley. As with shifting cultivation, nomadic pastoralism is just not productive enough with respect to the amount of food produced per unit area, so their numbers have also remained small. So, these early agriculturalists set the foundations for the civilizations that would soon follow. It is arguable that had the big freeze not occurred, the world would still be entirely inhabited by hunter-gatherers. We likely owe our modern world to our ancestors, who adapted to the changing conditions of their world. And there was much rejoicing 